radio silence from Masuda. This is how I respond. If you don't answer my calls, I'm making these videos longer and longer. This is my treat to y'all. I want to get to the end of these leaks. So here's an hour long coverage through these leaks. And if I can manage it, I'll do it again. And I'll keep doing it until we get to the end. All you have to do is nothing. Just enjoy the video. Here's where we left off. The official origin of the Pokemon universe. In the beginning, there was a swell of chaos. Everything slowly mixed together and everything was unclear. One day, a large egg appeared in the center. The egg continued to sway there. Wow, this is riveting. When the swell stopped, the egg spilled out and broke. The absolute god, Ash, was born. <laughs> Let it be known, on day zero, God said, let there be ass. So I thought I spoiled something last time. It was just Arceus. I speculated that Arceus might be one of many primordial gods, but I guess Pokemon never thought that. Arceus is the one true god. The scattered pieces of the shell transformed into giants and attacked the newly born ass one after another. But you stole this. The freaking eggshell fights back? No one expected that. What the frick the eggshell have against the crap you were nurturing all this time? You know what this means though? Arceus, the one true god, there is another primordial essence or essences. All of those giants are technically Pokemon that existed at the very beginning of time, equally with Arceus not one after the other. In a sense, they're almost like the other half of Arceus, the discarded part that naturally would attack Arceus. So there's a freaking another one true God. However, Ash continued to grow rapidly and continued to defeat the giants. A fierce battle ensued, but finally Ash defeated all of the giants. So it's the ultimate battle of good versus evil. Every myth has good beat evil. Wounded, Ash decided to create an alter ego. <laughs> As the left and right sides of Ash's body look different, he decided to create two alter egos. This boy's Exodia. Ash gathered the bodies. <laughs> you think, Farsius? Oz gathered the bodies of the giants he had defeated and poured his own blood into them. He makes the alter egos out of the giants. When the alter ego modeled after his left side was born, the area was filled with light. Oz named it Ea, the god of light. Yo, I'm not even sure Oz is Arceus. Us is about to sound like the father of Arceus. That sounds like Arceus, Ea. When the one who resembled his right side was born, time began to flow. Oh yeah, really? Because the Algon Pokya are so cool. They're supposed to be, but I get so pissed when there's a hundred of them. You're kidding me. The Algon Pokya go that high up the food chain. You know why I also hate this? It's because of that event in Heart Gold where you could just make an egg of another. No, 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 we can correct this. We can correct this. Primordial Diaga and Primordial Palkia. Let's say the ones we know are not those. When Arceus is able to make an egg and a new Diaga and Palkia, that's a PP pee -pee version. That's a little piss stain. And the reason these PP Diaga and Palkias try to steal Arceus's appearance is because they're the PP pee -pee versions. This makes everything make sense. So we've never seen Ea and... Wait, Ea and Ea? We've never seen the two Eas. That's my theory. It's kind of weird they say light instead of space, but that's the other thing. They say in Diago's entry that when Diago was born, time began to move. Oh, shut up. You freaking suck. Cyrus ain't summoning the actual god of light and time. And we're also not meeting the actual god of everything when we go to the Hall of Origin. Legends Arceus showed us that. It's only an avatar. I got an idea actually. Okay, see, 
I remember seeing those names right here. Yeah, Ia and Ea. Okay, so e they have different names. Ia is Palkia, Ea is Dialga. So after Oz defeats the giants, the wounded Oz wanted to create an alternate self. So maybe Oz was gonna die. So it makes new gods as its offspring before it dies. But look, as the left and right side of Oz's body were different, it had to create two selves. So that's not Arceus. Arceus is not us. Then who the freak is Arceus? This is crazy. Unless we want to say Arceus has a primordial form where it would be split half and half. But yeah, Oz gathers the bodies of the defeated giants and pours its blood into them. From the one who resembled his left poured out light. So Oz named it Ea, the god of light. From the one who resembled his right side poured out darkness. So Oz named it Ea, the god of darkness. To the two, Oz commanded that the world be filled with people and fell into a deep slumber. Although Ea and Ea were different in appearance, they loved one another, were joined and had many children. They freaking banged? You have the, you're the same person. However, there still existed no world and their frail children who had nowhere to go died one after the other. Though overcome with great sadness, Ea and Ea thought of creating a world where all could live healthy and prosperous lives. Ea and Ea called their children Ray, God of Eyes, I, God of Heart, and Hi, God of Voice. Create a freaking family tree. Somewhere. When Ray opens its eyes, everything that was there appeared. There was now contour and color in the world. When I wished for it, everything that was there could be felt. A sense of calm spread. When Hai shouted, everything that was there trembled. A blessed timbre began to resonate. To the three, Ia and Ea gave the seed of life and told them to nurture it. The three gathered in a circle and prayed, and the seeds sprouted. The sprout grew quickly and became the giant tree of life. However, the tree continued to grow, soon filling the entire world, and no one was able to move. The three asked Father Ia and Mother Ea for help. Ea and Ia joined once again and had three children! Rayquaza growled on Kyogre. Yo, they're freaking like, they're insane gods. That's not the impression we got of them. They just look like random natural Pokemon that grew apex. Kyogre, king of the sea. Growled on some dinosaur looking dude in the lava. They're freaking gods? Rayquaza wrapped its body around the Tree of Life. Groudon and Kyogre slammed their bodies into the Tree of Life. Eventually, the tree fell and broke into three pieces. I thought it would break into a thousand and just beat all the creatures. Ray, I, and Hai prayed, saddened that the tree would rot away like this. So they freaking broke the tree. That's, I don't think that's what freaking A and A wanted you to do. Then the pieces of the broken tree would transform into sky, earth, and ocean. Rayquaza became the pillar that holds the sky. That man stood up straight? The shadow that reached into the heavens, I guess Rayquaza's casted shadow, became the three gods who sustained the sky. Kairyu, Kabigon, and Bangiras. Bangiras! Wait a sec, that's Dragonite, Tyranitar, who's Kabigon? What the freak is going on? No, 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 no. These have to be ancient primal versions of them. Like the original Snorlax would have like a 700 BST. Then man Fs around and has kids, you descend and we have a Snorlax species. But I'm a, th there's no freaking way. I'm one of the gods? Boys, it says Gyarados here. 
I don't know why the other one said Snorlax. That's why I wish freaking centuries post the original. But whatever, it's a Snorlax. So from Rayquaza's shadow holding up the sky was born a god Dragonite, a god Snorlax, and a god Tyranitar. Then the air filled the sky and the stars sparkled. All right, let's see what Groudon did. Waste man. Groudon became the land that covers the earth. So he just laid on his back. The roar of the diving land became the three gods who sustained the earth. Who are these? Dabu San and Godan. These three Pokemon don't exist, I swear. Kyogre became the veins of water that embraced the oceans. A god Latius, a god Metagross, and a god Latios. The ocean was filled with water and the waves whispered. Thus, the world was born. You got Tyranitar, Dragonite. What I noticed when I looked at this is something very odd. You think Game Freak and Moss and all, they made this just for fun and then threw it away. But no, they made this with some serious intent. Like lore, they just didn't want to reveal to us for a while, but was true. Because when I look at Legends Arceus, the floor, I mentioned this looks like the floor there, completely like it. So much like it, even the little circles are there. So, that's some kind of divine pattern that represents the true gods that formed the world, or maybe by proxy considered the thousand hands of Arceus that shaped the world. It's all of them together. Just put it on screen right now. Even the little circles are there. So that one, that's freaking Tyranitar. It's there. They quite literally put it in one of the most recent games again. So that's still the truth. This freaking divine pattern still holds up. And they never thought we'd know what all those circles mean. Okay, thus the world was born. Ia and Ea and the various gods were very pleased with this and filled the world with their children. Oh, I guess this is the creation of all species on the planet. That peaceful world was a paradise for the children of God. The children of God would continue to multiply. Through that, words would change little by little. It's actually really cool to look at the Pokemon world from a creationist lens. Like all the Pokemon were pretty much put there in a divine way. If they change to evolution and you get like a Lola Ninetales and all, that can still happen naturally. But it's almost like a set, a thousand or two thousand Pokemon pretty much actually descended from the gods. Over time, the gods would begin to call those who lived in the world by two names. The children of God who resembled the great father Ia would be called Pokemon. The children of God who resembled the great mother Ea we're called humans. Wait. So Ia, which is the pink one in this image here, Ia looks like a Pokemon. And Ea actually looks like a human. So the original god Oss looked half Pokemon and half human. So Ea is a legit mother goddess Pokemon. She's been looking like that from day one. So us is kind of half chaotic looking and then half order looking. Bro. So they resemble the creatures by either Pokemon or humans. The absolute God us will soon awaken and seeing the world filled with its descendants will promise great abundance and prosperity. This is unbelievable. This is like a setup for the end of times. If that dude wake up, He's gonna kill everything. Don't freaking believe him. This is crazy. Where does Giratina fit in the picture? What the frick is Giratina? Let's have some fun. Let me Google the Hall of Origin. Look. Oh my God. What? Boy, did you see what I saw? Okay, 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 okay. Let's break this down. So I wanted to look at it cause I'm looking at this and wondering where the frick is Giratina? Was Giratina maybe not thought up yet? Because this is early Diamond and Pearl days. So I just wanted to see 
what it would look like in the Hall of Origin. And this is the ultimate confirmation that Game Freak is sticking by this mythology. Look at this image. Do you see this? So first off, shout out to Tyranitar right there, Gyarados and Dragonite. And then this one would be Rayquaza. But look at this crap. When you look here and you see Os Eon Ea, look at this official one. Big circle. Ea Ea. There's a third one. There's a freaking third one. You know what that means? It doesn't discredit the mythology. It just means that there's a second side to this mythology lurking in the shadows. In the same way, Arceus made a light half and a dark half out of itself. So I guess it was half black, half white. That's also part of its appearance. I'm going to correct this mythology for us, okay? Here's the issue with Giratina. They say Giratina was banished to the distortion world. So it really makes it look like that pipsqueak is the third circle that's put here. Because then where the frick is the actual one? But I don't want to think of it like that. I still want to think of it as that's a pipsqueak. The pipsqueak, Dialga, Palkia, and Giratinas, they play around. The world is a playground for them. They don't actually govern time, space, antimatter. They're children that just roam around, piss all over the place. So Giratina's just hanging out in the distortion realm because he's a troublemaker. Dialga and Palkia just popping in and out to check out things are going like little kids. They're like freaking trunks in Goten. They have the power of time and space and to travel around the aspects of the universe, but they're not the real deal. They're piss stains. So what I want to say instead is that that Giratina was born from the original one that is the third circle. And the original one is who they really mean was banished to the distortion world because... How the frick if Garatina's banished to the distortion world, does he pop up at Spear Pillar with no restraints on him when Cyrus is effing around? He's not banished. See, I'm freaking thinking. That man not kicked out of the house. He got the keys to the city. And don't forget this man just casually hangs out in Turnback Cave, despite us repeatedly telling him to stop coming into our universe. And then look at Legends, he's still hanging out here. The wording, if I remember that they use for his entry is that he was banished for violence and can only gaze upon the old world, stuck in the distortion world. He can't come here. I don't know who that is. So where is the third circle? Who's the actual Giratina that's banished to the distortion world? Here's the answer, here's my answer. The distortion world is the third circle. The distortion world is the original Giratina. That's the third circle. It has no way out of there. Its essence is the distortion world. It's banished and stuck there forever. So when Arceus looks around one day and a freaking troublemaker pipsqueak Giratina was born, maybe he made it in the distortion world, Arceus just kicked it back there, but it's not banished there. Arceus just said, bro, just stay there because it's a, it's a Goten version. Tell me that's not fire. Tell me that if someone wanted to come for Arceus' throne, that you would not give it the fearful image of being so restrained that it is the distortion world. That's how removed it is from anything involving Arceus' creation here. That's the dude, even though we can't see what it looks like, because it's like he's all chopped up. His physical form has been stripped. The same way Arceus took away part of his ego and put it into a physical form using the bodies of those giants, Arceus destroys its physical form and then banishes the alter ego essence. That's the freaking distortion world. That's the third circle. That was the ultimate treat that they actually secretly added the third circle. So pretty much what would make sense is that this mythology we read is the general mythology that's told to the whole pantheon here of Arceus's kids. But there's a secret side story that happened that's not passed down, which is that Arceus actually made a third alter ego that very quickly turned around and tried to kill Arceus. This is genius and take the throne for itself, which makes sense because the alter egos were made using the giants' bodies, which is Arceus's ultimate enemy. 
So of course one would be more evil like that, just wake up like that. It's almost like Giratina, the original one, instinctually would want to take the throne off Arceus and make the Eggshy gang rule, or the giants. And so, very quickly, Arceus dismantles this boy, banishes him, and then he freaking erases him from history. Call me, Master! He hasn't called me since I saw the Zygarde leak. I'm so freaking lonely. I was really sad after the last part because I can't avoid these leaks. Whatever's leaked here, I have to see because it's everywhere. I might as well see everything in an organized manner than just hear like someday two months later that, oh, didn't you know there's a Mega Zygarde? So I have to confront the leaks and I'm hoping nothing like the Zygarde exists in this. I could talk about this forever, but I suppose I'll ask one question for y'all to think about, which is who the frick is Arceus? Arceus doesn't look like us. <laughs> That's insane. Those freaking ominous Pokedex entries, Arceus shaped the world with a thousand hands. It was born out of an egg in the middle of nowhere. We freaking know the answers to that crap. What timeline am I in? All right, let me look at one more post. Gen 10... What the frick did I ask you, ass? Gen 10 region is an archipelago of many islands. Well, it's been about two days. I'm coming back to this video from the future because I want to keep adding on to it. It might take me a bit longer to make these videos, but I really want to make them long for y'all. So it's been two days since I got the archipelago crap. Now I'm going to look at it. Gen 10 region is an archipelago of many islands. This is unbelievable. So this is essentially Alola, which is fitting. For their 20th anniversary, they hop into Alola, make a unique Pokemon game, an unorthodox one where there's no gyms and all. That's what they're doing again for the 30th, another archipelago. What are some popular archipelagos they could target? Ooh, we got the Philippines, the freaking Canaries, the Maldives. So here's a map of the world. This is Japan right here. The Maldives would be somewhere right here. There's also the Galapagos, the Caribbean islands. And here's actually an interesting idea too. Japan. Now Japan is an island, but if you go to the very bottom of Japan, it's a line of island spread. Let's see what uh, people in the comments say. Greece it is. Holy frick, F everything I just said. Greece would be the sickest. It's made up of a bunch of islands as well. Let me get a map of it. So Greece is right here and it actually fits into their theme of doing a bunch of European countries. Cause if Greece is here, Paldia is here and Kalos is there and Galler is there. So Greece is right nearby. And Greece has incredible culture and a myth to just base their games off. The freaking Greek mythology. Since like freaking 10 years ago, we've always been talking about how cool it would be to make Pokemon inspired off stuff like the Greek gods. You could have an actual Pokemon that's one of the cover legendaries and it's Zeus. Obviously not human looking. The people of this Greek region would always be praying to this Zeus Pokemon and it would actually be some like thunder eagle that flies around kind of like a ho-oh and there's tales of people who've spotted it and that it always brings great fortune. And maybe in the opposite version, they talk about it bringing great destruction. The other side of Zeus, right? If he needs to, he'll bring down the wrath. Zeus could work out to be like the third legendary, really. The two covers would make sense to be something like the spartan Athen War, which is what this game should be inspired off and refer back to. And so that you could have the cover of one game be an Ares-inspired male-looking Pokemon, and then the other one is an Athena-inspired female-looking Pokemon. And you could have some sick designs. The Spartans looked up to Ares, the god of war. The Athenians, meanwhile, looked up to Athena, who's actually all about the smarts, if I remember. She's strategic and all. And I think it's more in the Athens side that you got all the great philosophers like Socrates, Plato. So that would be the two counterparts for the game. Some bloodlusting, barbaric Ares-themed Pokemon, and then a more graceful Athena Frick, that's just do that. Let's make a bet. I'm gonna tell you the titles right now. 
Okay, clip this or come back to this in 2026. Pokemon War and Wisdom. Waru, Wisdom, Mu. That's what they're gonna say in Japanese. That's your 2026 Pokemon games. Generation Big X. I'll see you. I'll see you, Time Machine Goons. Two years. Or, you know, if you got a time machine now, comment it down below. Titar. Oh, you're right. <laughs> of course, you always are. Ares is the king of wars and battles. Athena is smarter and the queen of smarts and wisdom. So what would happen is both games would be themed around the struggle for peace. In one game, it would be about strength and discipline. If there's an evil team, that's what they're projecting. That's Pokemon War. In the other game, it's about strategy and the search for as much knowledge as possible, infinite knowledge. That would be Pokemon Wisdom. The two approaches at achieving peace, leading to them releasing that legendary. Meanwhile, the rest of the game is gonna be lighthearted, fun adventures, but even with some of the extra legendaries, they could still base it off more Greek gods. And they don't have to actually make every single one. They can save some, like uh, if I make Zeus the third legendary, save his brothers for freaking 20 years later when we revisit this gen. My knowledge is finicky, but you know, once you make this Greece game, it will lead straight to an Egypt game. There's too much of a fun crossover between Greece and Egypt, Cleopatra crossing over and all, the Rosetta Stone, but forgetting all that, focus on Greece. This is a solid, this is the perfect Gen 10 region. Make Ares a fire type, Athena an ice type, keep going Titar. The hacker who's posting all of this claims they also got Legend ZA and Gen 10 source code? Please don't. Holy frick. That's so ass. They claim that Legend ZA's main storyline. No! Get this away from us! It's almost completely done and translated to English, but still missing like half the side quest contents or translations. All right. Ass, mighty ass. If there's one thing I can ask, no more Gen 10 or ZA stuff in this, please. Do everyone a favor. No one even wants to see it. Blitzel and Zebstrika were originally going to be a single stage Pokemon. Really? How am I going to find this? Well, it's dangerous, but I found it here. Well, did you really have to do that? Like of all the things you could have worked on for black and white. Okay, what else? Beta Park Ball. We were robbed. What were you gonna use a freaking park bomb for? Shut up. We were robbed. Save for the right things. I don't freaking care about the park ball. Very early black and white prototype? Boys, everything is just deleted. Whoa, I think it's this. Darn. Well, not really much to look at here. We have a placeholder sprite and freaking 18 Pokemon centers all around. And look, even a sideways Pokemon Center. This looks so Mario Maker. Could you imagine the fun they had designing the map? Just drag and dropping like a kid. When are you going to hire me, Masuda? Everything's deleted, y'all. I'm going to have the hardest time now. Sugimori artwork for some beta Gen 3 Pokemon. Okay, here's the image here. That's that crap I thought was a legendary Pokemon. Wait, it doesn't look as good there. Who's that? Arceus? Oh my god, Karibo got off... Karibo was certified. That boy was at the end of the production line. And then they axed him. This is actually not the Latias Blaziken. So this was their second beta one where they just made Blaziken with hair that went down and wings. Interesting info about Gaia Gen 10. It's freaking over. Just hit me. Just shoot me. This is from a meeting between Game Freak and the anime staff. Okay, let's not even look at his crap. Let's just read what, what's here. It might be better to time it and introduce Mega Zygarde or something similar later. That would be better. Oh, this is the same discussion. Just better translated. I feel like they're just choosing things based on color. I'd like them to push it back as much as possible. Bringing Zygarde in later. Rather than saying, don't include this Pokemon, we should focus on timing and consistency in their appearances. So what I think they're saying is that Horizons is doing something based off the themes of colors. Maybe relating to whatever's going on with these six trainers in the anime. I feel like they're dissing it right here. <laughs> Matsumiya. Since we've removed the island hopping aspect, there's no more worry about cannibalization. But I'm still worried about the school setting disappearing completely. The 
frick are they talking about? They talking about Naranha Academy, the anime? I don't think by cannibalization they mean Pokemon eating themselves. I think they mean more about one series cannibalizing the other. So if they do something in the anime, it might cannibalize some of the excitement that they want to preserve for Legends EA. It's tragic that we start by going to school because we want to, but then suddenly we can't go anymore. I could understand if a kid who doesn't want to go to school goes on an adventure, but this sounds like they're talking about Horizons. I've only seen like the first few episodes, but I think Liko and Roy were going to school for a bit and then they no longer can. The synergy with Titan is lacking. That's, that is what they're talking about. So Horizons' synergy with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is lacking. Yeah, yeah, we nailed it. So it might be nice to have more school segments along the way. It feels like such a wasted opportunity overall. Omer, you want to talk about wasted opportunities? Come see me right now. Pokemon itself is a wasted opportunity. Don't talk to me. We see this later on in Horizons. They introduce Naranja properly. They have characters from Scarlet and Violet tied in, popping up. So it was because they talked to the anime team that they created more synergy that we can see now. Sugimori, I don't understand why we're skipping Titan and instead heading into a Gaia-like direction. Making it alongside Gaia risks creating a similar atmosphere. No, this was explained later, but the point they have in common is the islands. Okay, so what they're talking about here is that they don't want to show Liko going from island to island because that's going to play a big role in Gen 10. All right, summary of every leak relating to future Pokemon projects. Let's see if we understand. So we have Pokemon Legends was supposed to come out in 2024. We know Mega Zygarde and Mega Zoroar is coming and is actually being developed for the current Switch. Then we have Pokemon Gaia, Gen 10 in some island-based region with two versions. Wait, K and N? Wait, 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 wait. Well, either way, the idea is island exploring. So I guess while we're having a little fun, a Lola-like adventure, we'll be slowly uncovering the myth of the region. And it's developed for the new Switch alongside the first Switch. That's everything, okay? We're up to speed, let's keep going. Beta Elsa and rightfully removed. Oh my God, now I have to go looking for this. Okay, let's see where it starts off. Beta Skyla. First off, what does Game Freak think removing it? Like this is gonna provide any help. Okay, well here's Beta Skyla. So she looks a lot more Latina there. But look, they still have her in this gym. So they very quickly ditched the gym and the plane idea. And then this is what she looks like in battle. And now she's not Latina. Okay, what else is there? Beta Skyla. Beta Charon. Yeah, we're freaking so happy for this one. Well, that's all it was. He's just, he's just weird. What's next? And then Beta Les, I freaking forgot. <sighs> It's gonna be fine. It's legit gonna be fine. Are you freaking? They just took more clothes off. Here's a Tumblr that has all the deleted posts. Holy frick, it's like they made her very obviously 15 there, but removed clothing. That's insane. They made her obviously, holy frick. Get the robe. They made her obviously 15 looking and in return removed more clothes so look put it up on screen this is elsa in the final product and this is beta elsa the model 15 year old here's what i'll say that one is a mom then they changed her age in the final one i'm assuming because first of all she looks eight now she's getting younger as i look at her it's actually crazy. She has the exact same pose with her headphones not plugged in. Or I guess it's plugged into an MP3 player. Thank goodness this version didn't come back in black two and white two. Whatever, keep going. Beta Skyla resembled Elsa a bit. We got Elsa too. Great, now I'm on someone's Tumblr. I don't even freaking remember that. I don't like Charon without his ahoge. Ahoge is a term in Japanese that means literally foolish hair. Why? Why? 
Why must you guys just speak like this? No wonder they gave him one. Okay, that's great. That's great. What the hell? A hermit crab themed scrapped line. Yo, he's kind of cool looking. He got a big shell and a, and a shield. Oh! We saw this Pokemon before. So it was for Gen 5. Eh, scrap it. And some footage from an early build of Black. Wow. Do you know how lazy I feel looking at this? The amount of work they would have had to do to transform all this. This is horrible. All right, keep going. This is Masuda. We got them. Psych. Here's more leaks. Harko. Oh, wow. You don't make jokes, Centro. You know what you make? As translation. All right, Psych. Here's more leaks. Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Beta UI. So we have Chikorita. This looks mostly the same. But you can see they had a more beautiful bottom screen. What the frick did you do to it, Masuda? Oh, no. X and Y time. Pokemon X and Y prototype. Okay. This is Gen 6 leak time. Oh my frick. Look at this. Look at this crap. Hey, hey, why are you hacking, Master? Why are you hacking? Oh my God, I feel so lazy. I don't want to work for Game Freak anymore. Wow, that's so beautiful to see the stages of them working on this. Somewhere out there, that's what Legend Z look like right now. They're debugging and speeding around. Game Freak was experimenting with a much more dynamic in-battle camera for X and Y. It looks so good. Really? X and Y had a good camera. Didn't it like pan around and show close-ups? Here's a look along side-to-side -side comparison with the standard camera. Kind of disappointing that the current game still haven't achieved this more than 10 years later full stop. If I don't smack this man's ass. All right, here's the post because it's deleted. Okay, so we're fighting some bug catcher and they're gonna have comparison. Oh, that's clean. What the frick? Yo, that looks like Pokemon Stadium. Bro? Bro, this looks like it's for the Switch. In terms of how freaking dynamic things are moving. This straight looks like Pokemon Stadium with the hectic animations. The only idea I can come up with for why they scrapped it is it was starting to lag on the 3DS. In the files, this mode is called the Masuda camera. So he was the one pushing for this. No, that means that's Masuda with the camera. He's, he filmed all that. Yo, Masuda, you naming everything. The Masuda method, Masuda breeding, Masuda camera, Masuda missed calls. No, he doesn't call. Whoa, here's the full prototype Gen 3 decks so we have every pokemon and then why it was scrapped this one they said is too much like a pelican Are you joking the, the real pelipper is a pelican i think for this one kodoman it looks like dragon quest damn the this is the this is behind the scenes oh no this one is kodoman that's what they say look like dragon quest for this one that says might resemble a chocobo i thought it was they said this one just straight up looks like a peacock. That's what I said. And then for this one, they said it needs to be different from Politoed. Yo, I bet you that was a third Poliwhirl. That's crazy. Duskull. It looks like a shy guy. But you didn't scrap him? This one, it looks like a deli bird evolution to me. Oh, for Tropius, I think the banana should be more pronounced. Oh my frick. For these three, they said too person-like. Sumo might be too controversial in Korea. Wow. You really have to think about your universal audiences? You're not scared to offend America? I'm freaking offended. Well, Korea probably makes up a huge portion of its sales. And then for this, I do appreciate the concept though. This one they said overlaps with Pseudo Wudo. You don't think there's like 18 Pikachus? All right, well, that's the general notes. The other ones are boring. Let's keep going. Hilda early 3D model. Wait a sec. Not much revealed in this drop. That's pretty much it for now. Waiting for the next patch of files. There's a... There's a 3D model of Hil This is for Pokemon X and Y. Are you telling me? Hilda and Hilbert. The protagonists that just disappear after black and white. And are nowhere to be seen in black 2 and white 2. Where I think even if you go to the home, 
that the mom, I think Novema Town, the mom says, hey, he or she went looking for N, haven't seen them since. That they went to Kalos. That's the answer. You, you telling me you would have met them somewhere in X and Y. They would have been the trainer red. Give it up for a Game Freak. Because they scrap stuff like this, but put Dexio and Cena in substitute. They're going to give you the Zygarde core from the game we scrapped. You would have fought them. And let's say you fight Hilbert and Pokemon X, Hilda and Y. They would have Zekrom in one version, Reshiram in the other version. And they would talk. I imagine they wouldn't be like red, dot, dot, dot. Where first off, they would have Mega Evolutions on their team because they're freaking in Kalos exploring. And two, they would have Pokemon beyond level 70. Let's just match red around level 80. There would be such a hurdle that if you beat them, they would be surprised and maybe say something like, in the same way N gives up Zekrom or Reshiram in the previous games, they're like, you know what? You can have the Dark Stone or Light Stone and you can actually catch Zekrom or Reshiram somewhere in the post game. And then they disappear forever. You know how it be. Sad vibes. You're blocked again, Masada. How could you design her whole 3D model? That's a lot of work. That model in the overall looks fire. That's the kind of crap that you're in some post-game cave. And you just see her like looking at the water back turned to you. And your mind is blowing. Y'all yeah, remember around the time X and Y was leaking? And that Greninja leak came out and blew everyone's minds? Then Zygarde in a cave blew everyone's minds? That crap would have been insane. I bet you depending on your starter, they might have programmed Mega... Embor Superior or Samurai for them to use. So they made her model and then probably realized all these other things they would have to do for their vision that they just scrapped all of it. Either that or it was not scrapped. They just realized, hey, let's push this into the other two Kalos games, you know? Whatever was supposed to be X2, Y2, where Perfect Zyger would actually pop up and play his role. And then they just scrap that as well. Actually, what are people saying in the comments? What a baddie. X and Y crumbs. Why is no one freaking talking about this? Who's the X and Y protagonist? Yeah, it's Serena. Okay, I thought it was freaking crazy for a second. Yeah, bro, I bet you beat them. They give you the lighter dark stone, the mega stone for the starter they were using and say, you know what? It's about time I go back home. And they bring the for story full circle. She's beautiful. Apparently, Game Freak uses 3D models of the protagonists of the previous games to test early versions of their games. Yeah, 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 yeah. A 3D model they didn't have? They would use a model they have laying around. They're not putting the resources to make a whole new model. They'd much rather use a T-pose of a stick. I don't think it's a placeholder. That's a very complicated ass placeholder. Her hair is wild. They gave her the bag and all. A placeholder is supposed to look ugly. In the time you're designing a placeholder, you might as well make the real Serena. <sighs> One more. Ooh, Pokemon X and Y test map. Beta X and Y protagonist? You see? That's the placeholder. I wasn't lying. That's the ugly ass crap that works as a placeholder. You see that plastic hair? The pants and shirt that's actually connected. That's the kind of effort that goes into a placeholder. She kind of actually look like the Ultra Sun and Moon girl. I bet you that's a early bug catcher they designed. I guess a girl bug catcher. And they were just using that as the placeholder. I finally found it. The X and Y leaks. The Gen 6 stuff. I have to see if there's some Zygarde stuff in this. Or more stuff that's going to piss me off. Oh yeah, we'll do this next time. Oh, look at this. This is the meeting where the Pokemon company reflected on why Ash had to be canceled in the anime. I bookmarked all these. Frick, I meant to cover these. But these are a bunch of reading posts. So I, wanted, I don't want to do these yet. Oh. Okay, what the frick, Game Freak? Yo. Original sin based on the current Pokemon world. I know what this is. The original sin is eating the fruit and effing up, right? 
in the Pokemon world, I bet you all the Pokemon, they existed the way they were. Then some Pokemon, they ate the equivalent of the forbidden fruit. And what it did is, it took away all their Pokemon power, but gave them a kind of divinity. And the descendants of those would be the one that looked like the mother goddess, the one that looks human-like. That's what that fruit would do. And that would explain why they call some Pokemon and some humans. I bet you there must have been a bunch in the distant past when the boundary between Pokemon and humans were still blurred. And then Pokemon like Slug caught the mention. That's what it's gonna be, I bet you. When they say Oz is gonna return, there's some crap about that here. Give me something that confirms my theory that Ea and Ea are not the Algon Palkia. I have to read this. Master made me so freaking happy. The fact that he kept that circle real, it's so tasteful. You know, it's not like you just make up a mythology and then six months later, as you've started developing the next game, you scrap it. He liked what he made. Well, they, it's all of Game Freak. And they decided to stick by it. Regardless of whether those little circles change, and you know, it's not a God Titar or Tyranitar Gyarados and all, there's still some kind of sick mythology that they have in their minds as the origin of the universe. Bro, I have to read this.